So now let's look at the real options. So we've looked at the NPV as the measure to appraise your project. So for example, if the NPV of this project tells you after doing this project, you can get $30 million back. Not a problem, okay. But perhaps you're gonna consider not to do this project right now because you think that it's not the right time for you to do that. Perhaps you're going to delay that project into one year's time or perhaps in two years time. So if that's the case then, you can get an extra value worth of $20 million for example. So for example, if that's the case then, for example, if you delay the project, that's called the option value. Or that's your real option value. You can get another $20 million and if you toast them up, you can get $50 million as the overall value for this project if you're going to delay it. So that's the idea behind it. And in this particular section, we are particularly focusing on how we're going to estimate the value worth this $20 million here. So we're going to use some of the very, very complicated uh, tool, which is the Black Souls Option Pricing Model, or we can call it as the BSOP model. Uh, in order to help us to estimate that value in a second. So first of all then, we are going to see, okay, that's the projects that we are currently doing, and those are the options, which is not an obligation for the company, but it's just to be the option, just to be the choices that we can choose. So what are, what are the choices then? So the choices for this project, we can call it as the real options are the real choices. So basically there will be three types of real options. First of all the option to delay your project which means rather than starting a project right now you're going to start the project in one year's time you're going to delay it. That's it. Secondly it's the option to expand your business for example uh, on top of this investment, on top of this building that we've built into this particular area, we are going to input more money in building more property plants equipment into this area so to expand the businesses. So what would be that value then? So we're going to value it as well. Thirdly, the option to abandon. Which means instead of operating this business on our own, we're going to sell it. What would be the option, what would be the value of that option if you were to sell that business? So as you can see, okay, on the left hand side, these two are called the core option. On the right hand side, this is called the put option. What do I mean by core option or put option then? So a core option means a right to buy. So why this is the case then? Think about it in this way. You're picking up the telephone and making a telephone call because you think it's the right time and also the value is great so that you pick up your telephone and call somebody to buy it. That means, okay, it's the call option, which means we have a right to buy. But as you can see, this is a right, this is an option, this is the choice. It is not the obligation for the company to do that. On the other hand, put option, which means this is a right to sell. And that means, think about it in this way, I mean, it's put option, it's not a good thing, so it decides to put it. Put it somewhere else. And hence, in effect, this is a right for uh, us to sell off that something uh, to others. That's called put option. And of course, you may see uh, in the example in the real life, we also call it as the long an option or go long or perhaps we're going to short an option. I can call it as go short. So long an option which means we are going to buy it. Short an option, that means we are going to sell it. What does that mean then? 
It's not different from the put and call option before. Yes, so we think about it this way. So first of all, if we are the option writer, we sell the option, they can either be the call option, which allows another party to buy, or put option, which allows another to party to sell to the option holder. So if that's the case then, okay, this means from the option writer perspective, we sell that option, that's called short an option. That would be the same. And from the option holder's perspective, we buy, for example, the call option from the option writer who sells the right to me. So this is called long the option. Or you can call it as the buy the option. So you can either buy the call option or put option. It's an option to buy or sell. Or from the option writer's perspective, we short an option to you. Short a call option or put option to you. So that's um, the idea behind it. So, but the question is, within that option, what do I mean by option then? Well, think about it this way, before we dip into the method appraisal uh, part. So, think about it in this way. If you're thinking about the very, very simple idea related to shares. So, related to shares, if you buy it in the open market, the market value, if you're going to buy that share, is to be $10 per share. So perhaps I'm going to give you an option, an option to buy that share, for example, you only need to spend $7 to buy it. And then you can immediately sell that share after you buy it at 7 and then you sell that at $10 and hence you can earn $3 of this capital gain directly. So that's the reason why you're going to exercise the option to buy the share at $7 per share. So if that's the case, then the option to buy a share, that's called the exercise price. Okay, so one is market value, one is exercise price. You know that difference already, yeah? Because exercise price is to exercise that option to buy or sell something at a particular price that is agreed in advance. And of course, in most, most of the circumstances, if you entered into the option agreement, you will also have to pay for the fees, that's called the premium, in order to enter into that particular contract. Okay, so that's the idea behind it. So that's the reason why, from the option writer's perspective, uh, we'll make a game out of this um, transaction. And of course, we will be detailing the option writer, which means short the option in the next to bar section, but in this particular section, we are standing from the option holder's perspective, who's going to buy the option, which means real options for the investment price. So either you're gonna delay the project, expand the project, or you're gonna abandon it. So as we've seen before, the real options can either be the core options, because if you delay it or expand it, which means you're gonna spend more money into doing it, and hence in effect, is the right to buy something. On the other hand, if you abandon the project, you're going to sell off the entire business to the third party. Okay, so that's the put option. It's the option, it's the choice that you're going to sell that to somebody else. But the question is, how are we going to value this then? So before we dip into that, we're going to use the Black Souls option pricing model. Don't worry, let's go back to the study notes. As you can see, we've got the type of option here. So delay expands, that's called the call option, which means the option to buy, abandon, is called the put option, an option to sell. And the value of the project when we are appraising it, not only we're going to consider the traditional NPV, but also we need to plot the option value. So the option value here will be including the five components in that. So let me just detail that before we move any further for this option value of how we're going to value it. So, option value will include two things. First of all, is the intrinsic value. And secondly, 
is the time value. So, intrinsic value, which means this is the difference between the market price or the market value with the exercise price. So what does that mean then? Think about it in this one. Um, so the current market price of a share is $10 before. If I allow you to exercise the options to buy the share at 7 of course if I were you, I would exercise that option because as you can see, if I exercise it to buy at 7 and 7 at 10, I can gain $3. That's the gain, yeah? So that $3 is the intrinsic value. It's the money that will come into the organization if you're going to exercise it. It's the option to buy or sell something. So in the previous example, because the market price is 10 and the exercise price is 7, so the difference between these two would be $3 would be the intrinsic value. Okay, it's the value that is within that particular option, comparing with the market value of the exercise price. Okay, so that's for the call option. For example, if you think about the put option on the other hand then, so if the market price is $7, if I allow you to sell off that share at $10, if that's the case, okay, if you sell it in the open market, you can only sell at 7, but you can sell at 10 because you exercise that option. If that's the case, the value for that, of course, you can gain $3 out of it, yeah? So another 3, yeah, that would be the intrinsic value for the put option as well. So just the difference between these two will be absolutely fine. So as you can see in your note, I'm going to give you the relationship here. So the market price is what's the exercise price. So exercise price is agreed in the option contract uh, between the writer and the holder. So think about it this way for a call option. If the market price increases, so for example, within that agreement, you can buy that share at $7. The market price instead of $10 now has increased up to 11 and that means, okay, you can buy at 7 and sell it at 11. You can make $4 of gain. So, of course, as an increase in the market price, there's an increase in the core option value because you can gain more. On the other hand, for a put option, you can think about it in this way. The market price is increased up to 11. Instead of, uh, I mean, I'm going to allow you an option to sell at 7, but... You can sell it in the open market for 10, but now you can sell it at 11. If you exercise that contract to sell at 7, you will lose money. So as the increase in the market price, surely there will be decrease in the put option value. It's the option to sell. Okay, hope you're happy. Now, next one, the exercise price. So the exercise price focus upon the exercise price here. If there's an increase in exercise price, okay, so agree with you that you are going to sell it at, I don't know, instead of 7, but now you can, uh, for example, for a call option, you can buy that share at a dollar. Okay, so if the market price is 10, right, if you buy at 7, you can sell at 10, you can make $3 of gain, but if you buy at 8, you can only make $2 of gain. So as an increase in the exercise price for the call option value, there will be decrease in the call option value because you can make less money. On the other hand, what about for the put option then? For the put option, so, I agree with you, okay, you can sell at 7, but now you can sell it at 8, you can sell more. So if that's the case then, uh, in the open market, let's say it's just to be $5 of that share price. But now you can sell it at 8 rather than 7 rather than 5. And hence you can make more gain out of it. Because if you sell it at 8, yes, instead of selling at 5, in effect you're making $3 of gain. So it's an increase in exercise price for the put option. This will increase the put option value as well. So that's the first two components within the intrinsic value, okay, within that option value. So within that option value, we've also got the time value as well.
This time value is made up of three things. First of all, is the time to expire. So, if I allow you to exercise that option, perhaps in two years' time or in three years' time, yes, absolutely fine. That value must be greater if I allow you to exercise that option in tomorrow, but only considering the time to expire. Because you can think about it in this way. We're not certain what's the value would be in two or three years' time. Perhaps the value will increase dramatically in two or three years' time. And hence, the increase in the time to expiry, surely this will increase both of these call option as well as the put option value, as you can see. Yeah? So that's the logic behind it. So secondly, it will also include the volatility of a cash flow. So, for quite a lot of these venture capitalists, they would value or they would prefer the risky options because more risks within that particular choice, more value that will come into the organisation uh, if we are going to proceed with this uh, particular thing. And hence, if the cash flow related to the underlying asset, for example, related to shares, it's quite volatile, which means it's quite risky. At the same time, this will increase in value for that particular option if you're going to exercise it. So if the cash flow is more volatile, more risks uh, that you're going to suffer, and this will increase the value as well. So as you can see, the volatility of the cash flows, surely we're going to use the standard deviation to measure it. So if there's an increase in the volatility of those cash flows, it's an increase in volatility for cash flows. This will increase both of these core as well as the put option value. And finally, we've got the interest rate as well. So, interest rates, what does that mean? Well, it's an increase in interest rates. This will increase the cost of financing the business. If this increases the cost of financing the business, which means from the investment appraisal's perspective, we'll have to use the cash inflows uh, to pay off to those, for example, debt holders or something like that, because it's the increase in the cost of financing our business. So from that perspective then, if there's an increase in interest rates, that the discount factor will equal to 1 divided by 1 plus the interest rate for a power of n, if there's an increase in interest rates, this will decrease the discount factor. And to determine the value that we're going to buy or sell something, for example, we're going to use the cash flows times the discount factor for this. And if it decreases, okay, so we, um, for example, spend less to buy it for a co options perspective. If we spend less to buy it, surely. This will increase the call option value, but at the same time, for the put option, we're going to sell less. Yes, because of the increase in interest rate, and hence this will decrease the put option value. And as you can say, it's an increase in the interest rate. This will increase the call option, but decrease the put option value. That's all you need to know, right? That's all you need to know for the option value here. It includes the intrinsic as well as the time value. And the way that we're going to evaluate, because as you can see, uh, we can get that intrinsic value if we are doing the investment appraisal. The exercise price is like the investment that we are going to make into this project. And the market value for that is like the cash inflows uh, from that project. And then time to expiry, for example, the option to delay this project, you're going to do that project in two years time. Okay, so that two years will be a time to expiry uh, for your option to be exercised to delay your project. And volatility of cash flows, this can be based upon the past information and reflect that into a standard deviation here. Also interest rates, we're going to assume that we're going to use the risk-free rate um, to value the option because for the simplicity reason purposes 
Of course, that will be a limitation of that. And based upon this, yes, we plot into the Black Source Option Pricing Model as the call option formula. So Black Source Option Pricing, if you turn back to your notes onto your next page, you can see the Black Source Option Pricing Model, or you can call it as the BSOP Model. Okay, we're going to call it as the BSOP model. So that BSOP model, first of all, we are given the call option. For example, if you were to delay or expand your project, okay, so what would be that option value? Of course, you can slot the variables and then into the formula here. So as you can say, let me explain first of all. So this is given into the formula sheet. So C stands for the core option value. For example, if you decide to delay or expand your project, what would be the value? And then PA stands for the future cash flows related to this project. So all you need to do is you're going to discount those cash flows into today's terms, which will give us the PA. So that would be the current market value from this project. And then we've also got the... Um, what we also have got the PE, which is the costs that you've input into this project. For example, you buy the property, plant equipment, and so on. But that PE is not subject to the time value of money. You just to uh, estimate what is the amount that you're going to input into this project, and you take that value as the cost there. So that's all you need to do. And we've got the E as well. That's the reason why uh, I asked you to bring that scientific calculator into the exam. Because if you see uh, the log over here, so the log over here, so you see the log over here, you press the shift button and then you press the log, it will give you the E directly. Okay, so. Uh, that's the reason why you have to bring that scientific calculator because I can see that the back source option pricing model comes up again and again, uh, I mean, in most of these examinations. So, we've got the power of minus R. So, R means the risk free rate. You can't use the cost of capital because that would be a limitation of the black source option pricing model. And T stands for the time to expire time before you exercise your option. So for example, you decide to delay that project in five years time. So t the T will be five years. It's not the project's life, but it's the time that you are going to exercise it. And of course, we can see the remaining two things within this formula. So one is for ND1, and another is for ND2. What are they then? So first of all, D1. So D1, of course, this formula has been given by your examiners as well. So all you need to do is to slot those variables. For example, lock. Yes, as you can say, you don't press the shift button, but press the lock button. Yes, press the lock button, and then you slot the uh, the future cash flows or the PA or the market value divide by the PE, which is the exercise price, plus the R plus uh, the 0.5 times the uh, standard deviation squared and then t which is the time before you exercise that option divide by the standard deviation and times uh, t for the square root so that's the d1 so after you calculate d1 we calculate d2 using a d1 minus the uh, standard deviation times the t take the square root so uh, if you calculate that d1 so if you calculate that D1, so let's say it's to be not point, I don't know, not point um, three. So if it's not point three, okay, so what we need to do is first of all is positive. Yeah. So that all we need to do is first of all we're gonna find out the figure into your standard normal distribution table. So if we got the not point three. If we got to 0.3, okay, 0.3 plus 
0 and 0. So if that's the case then, fine. So that what gives us 0.1179. So all you need to do, because it's positive, 0.3, so it plus another mirror effect of 0.5 for this. Okay, we plot another 0.5, so 0.1, can't remember that figure. So plus 0.5, 0.1, okay. So 0.1, 179. Plus 0.5, so that would give us 0.6179. Okay, so that's for N D1, yeah? So that's how we work out the D1 was the D2, and check it back into your uh, standard normal distribution table. You have to use that. And um, if it is related to put option, for example, is the option to abandon your business, so all you need to do is, first of all, you calculate the co-option value, and then you minus the PA plus the PE, and then times the E for the power of minus R and T. So that would give us the put option value. Okay, so that's for the exercises, that's for the formulae. The best way to show this from my perspective is to go through a practical example uh, onto your next page of your note. We take the exam standard question from the exam and let's see how we're going to apply this to this particular question. So requires part A is we're going to estimate the financial impact of the director's decision to delay the production and marketing of the game. So that means, okay, the option is not related to others, but it's only related to the production and the marketing of the game. And as a result of it, when determining the exercise price, which means the cost incurred related to this option, we only consider the cost related to the production and marketing of the game rather than others. Um, because this is the decision to delay the project and hence that in effect is an option. And we also told us the black source option pricing model will be used. Okay, so we're going to follow the formula that's given by your examiner. And all relevant calculations should be shown. Okay, not a problem. And B, briefly discuss the implication of the answer obtained in part A above. So that means we're going to discuss the limitations in particular related to the black source option pricing model and see if the above option is to abandon the project what would be its value so that means we're going to use the put call uh, parity theory or relationship to work out that put option value okay in the part c so let's read through the scenario together then okay so the total of this question is called MMC, is considering whether to undertake the development of the new computer game based upon the adventure theme due to be released in 22 months. Okay, so that theme is to be released in 22 months, but our option is to consider the marketing and development of the game. So what would be the time then? It's not 22 months here, but perhaps it will be others. So it's expected that the game will be available to buy two months after the uh, film's release. So that means, okay, uh, the film is to be released in 22 months' time. And we plot another two months, okay. So that means it's in 24 months' time. If we are going to... Um, so it says, by which time it will be possible to adjust the pop popularity of the film and a high degree of uncertainty. So that means until two years time, which means 24 months later, we can start to develop a market of the game because we see that uh, people will like it, perhaps. However, at present, there's considerable uncertainty about whether the film and the game is likely to be successful. So that's the reason why we are not going to do it right now. Although the MMC will pay for the exclusive right to develop and sell the game now, the directors of the opinion that they should delay the decisions to produce and market the game until the film has been released and the game is available for sale. So that means, okay, after we've uh, ascertained that the film has been released and also people will like it, 
it starts to sell it. That means the time to expiry is to be two years. We can't express that in month. We have to express that in years. Okay, so that's the um, characteristics of the Black Souls Option Price Model. Also, we are told the MMC has forecast the following end of year cash flows for the four year sales uh, period of the game. As you can see, from year one to year four, we got the cash inflows from 25, 18, 10, and 5. Okay, so that will be the cash inflows. Of course, we can say that those will be the price of an asset or PA for short. We're going to discount it then into today's terms at the pulpit discount factor. So we are told the MMC will spend $7 million at the start of each of its next two years to develop and uh, to develop the game, the gaming platform, and to pay for the exclusive rights to develop and sell the game. Okay, so it's related to that development worth of $7 million. And we're told following this, the company will require $35 million for the production distribution and marketing of the game so if that's the case only for that 35 million dollars rather than including the 7 million dollars because 7 million dollars will be the related to game platform but we are particularly focusing on the production and marketing of the game so the exercise price will be only 35 rather than 42 in total okay so that's the uh, complication that comes in um, so, and also, it can be assumed that all of these costs and revenues include the inflation. Okay, so that means uh, when we are discounting the cash flows, we are going to use the money rate, not the real rate of interest. The relevant cost of capital is to be $11, right. So that means we're going to use that as the discount factor to discount those cash inflows that we've seen before. And the risk-free rate is to be 3.5%. Okay, so that will be the RF. We're going to plot that into the formulae, into the Black Souls option price model. And also, MMC has estimated the likely volatility of the cash flow at a standard deviation of 30%. That would be the S, or you can call it the standard deviation. We're going to plot that into the formula as well. So those are the information that are given by your examiner, not a problem. So the first thing that we're going to do is, according to your... Um, I mean, according to your question, so part A, we're going to look at if we were to delay the project, what is the overall financial impact? So the overall financial impact or the value of the total project will be equals to the normal NPV analysis and we're going to plus the option value. And in this case, the option value will be the option to delay that project in two years' time. So, first of all, we're going to start the working one, and secondly, we start with the working two. So, working one for the MPV analysis. So, all we can do is we're going to discount those cash flows, and that's it. So, we've got the number of years, yes. And we need a pulpit discount factor at 11%. So it can give us the present value uh, based upon those relevant cash flows. So as you can see, in two years time onwards, we'll start to uh, have the inflows in each of these four years. But before that, in the first two years in particular, we are going to spend $7 million dollars and uh, also 35 as well. So let's do it. So the years will be now in one year's time. In two years' time, we're going to spend the costs and then we're going to get the inflow from the third year onwards. So the cash flows will be in. Right now, of course, we're going to spend $7 million in next of our two years. And at the end of the second year, of course, we're going to spend another 35 to market and produce and distribute of the game. Right. And also, we are given the catch inflows 25, 18, 10, and 5.
in the next uh, four years. Discount it as the discount factor. I hope you're happy. So all you need to do is to kind of find the um, price and value table. So let me just to turn back to price and value table here. So it's at 11%, okay. From year one up to year six, all you need to do is to copy it. 0 0.901 year one, not point a one two in year two, not point seven thirty one in year three, not point six fifty nine in year four, not point five ninety three in year five, not point five thirty five in year six. So we then multiply by the uh, cash flows together with the discount factor. Uh, it will give us the present value at time naught, 7 million, 6.31 million in the year one, and then 28.42 in the year two, 18.28 in year three, 11.86 in year four, 5.93 in year five, and 2.68 in the year number six. We're going to summarize it together. That will give us the MPV. I hope you haven't forgotten about that. It will give us 2.98 negative. So that means if you're not going to consider the option value, if you're going to do this project right now, okay, we'll end up with a loss. Yes? If you are going to consider the project, although we delayed that project, but if we are not going to consider the option value, will end up with a loss figure of minus 2.98 million dollars. That's not so attractive because from the MPV analysis we know that if the MPV is less than zero, we are going to reject the project from the financials perspective. But what about for the option value then? So that's the reason why we're going to start the working to, to use the BSOP model to calculate the option value. And in this case, is the call option that we're gonna delay the project. So the best way to show this is first of all, copy the formula from your examiner, okay? So copy that. So the call option value equals to PA times the ND1 minus the PA times the ND2 times E for the power of minus R and T. And then next, we're going to lay out the variables. Of course, we have got the PA, so that would be the discounted future cash flows of this project. We've got a PE, it's the exercise price, which means the cost incurred. And in this case, related to that option is the uh, production marketing of the game, which means it's the 35. And then the T is time to exercise the option. In this case, is to be 22 months plus another two. So that would give us two years. Please express that into the number of years rather than the month, okay, in the exam. And also the risk-free rate. We are told this to be 3.5%. And the standard deviation, or you can call it as this S, is to be 30%. So the only thing that's missing is related to PA. So PA, you can go back to the working one for the cash flows analysis. All you need to do is going to plot all of these cash inflows from the year three onwards in the next four years together. That's how you calculate the PA. So if that's the case then, okay, so the PA would be 18.28 million plus 11.86 million plus 5.93 million and plus 2.8 68 million. So we total them up, so that would give us 38.75 million dollars. 
So we work out those variables already. The next thing that we're going to do is we're going to work out also for the ND1 as well as the ND2 so it can work out the coefficient value here. So how we're going to calculate the ND1 and D2? So all you need to do is first of all calculate the D1. Again this formula you don't have to remember that because it's given by your examiners directly. Just copy that from the formula sheet. That's all you need to do. So D1 will be log PA divided by PE plus the risk free rate plus 0.5 for standard deviation squared times T and divide by the uh, standard deviation times the T, take the square root. So if that's the case then, okay, see so PA is to be 38.75 The PE is to be 35, it's the cost that we're going to spend in marketing and production of the game. So, how are we going to find out the lot value then? So again, keep reminding you for the scientific calculator, it's the good thing, Casio, scientific calculator. So, um, you can see the word, okay, log, yeah, plus log here, so that gives us a log, and then you take 38.75, and divide by 35, so that would give you 0 0.101. Okay, so that's how we do it. So we plus the R, which is the risk free rate in this case, is to be 3.5%. We can express that into 0 0.035, that would be more accurate, plus 0 0.5 times the standard deviation for the squared, so 0 0.3 squared times t, which is 2 years, and divide by standard deviation 0.3 times the t to the square root. Start d1 if you plot that into a calculator. So just a quick exercise, stop the tape now for one minute. And use the scientific calculator to plot that into a calculator to see how you get on. Right. I'm sure that you've got the right answer, which is 0.61, so that will be the rounding difference. You will see that there will be many of these decimal places, yes, for that particular figure, but only keep two decimal places in the exam. Okay, only keep two, because that will save you lots of time and get full marks as well. So, 0.61, if you find out in the normal distribution table in the bottom of your note, so... 0.6 T1, so that would give us 0.2291. So the ND1 because 0.61 is positive, so that we take 0.5 plus 0.2291. That would give us 0.7291. Now of course, if the D1 or D2 is negative, what we can do is we take 0.5 minus it if it is negative, but because it's positive, so we plus that. So, we work out the ND1 already. Congratulations, you've done a great job. Okay, plot that into the formula later on. Now, let's work out the D2 equals to D1 minus the standard deviation times the time, take the square root. So, the D1, which is 0 0.61, as we just calculate it. And then the S stands for 0 0.3, and then T will be 2. So, if you plot that into a calculator, just stop the tape now for 30 seconds, and plot that into a calculator to, say, to see how you get on. So, the square roots over here, from my perspective, if you see in your scientific calculator, you can see that square root. Okay, so plus that, and that's all you need to do. Alternatively, another way that you can do is to say, well, this is 2, and that will be for the power of 1 over 2, because power of 1 here, 
and the square root stands for 2. So that means, okay, you take 2 and then you plot, uh, press that power is 1 divided by 2. So that would give us the same result as well. So if that's the case, okay, if we plot that into a calculator, that should give you 0.19. If that's 0.19, okay, check it back into your normal distribution table. It's 0.1 plus 0.09, and that will give us 0.0753. So the ND2, because it's positive, so it's 0.5 plus 0.7. 0.0753. So that what gives us 0.5753 for ND2. So once we've worked out the ND1 is worth the ND2, congratulations, you've done everything already. So we plot that into the formula. We know those informations already. Yes. What does that come to? Stop the tape now for another two minutes to calculate the value on your own. Because you know the PA and D1 as we calculate it, P and then D2, and also E, don't forget, you can get that E by pressing the shift button and then lock button, so that gives us the E value, and then for the power of minus the risk free rate times two. What does that come to then? Stop the tape. Right, that's great. And the value for the option is to be 9.53 million dollars. We use the black source option pricing model. Slot them back into the original formula. So the overall value for this project now becomes 6.55 million dollars. So that means Without considering the option value to delay the marketing and production of the game, you only got minus not uh, two point ninety eight million dollars as the option uh, as the project value, which is negative. So we should reject it. But after you consider the option value to delay the marketing and production of the game, you will get another nine point fifty three million dollars. And overall, if you are going to consider into that, you will make a game, which means the overall MPV will be. E would be greater than zero, and hence you're going to accept that project. So that's what the question has told us. Okay, so for the uh, part A, so we tick tick for the part A. It's a long process, yeah. We've done a great job. Now let's look at the part B together, 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 together. Anyway, part B. Briefly discuss the implications of the answer obtained in the part A above. Okay. So that means uh, always in the exam, even though the examiner hasn't required you to, um, to comment on that black source option pricing model, please write something that's similar to part B. Because by doing so, one mark equals to one point. Perhaps you can get an extra two points as a credit. That's the magic behind the P4 exam. You have to know this. Right, so part B together. So, first of all, we've talked about the limitations of the model. First of all, we are going to assume that the market is perfect and there will be no transaction costs for each of these transaction. So for example, if you were to delay uh, the option, perhaps uh, you are gonna, I mean, say to your staff, okay, delay it uh, to produce a market of the game, but produce that plan in two years time. So if that's the case, perhaps that will cost you money because for example, you're gonna ask the staff to uh, do something else right now, rather than do that marketing of the game. So that perhaps will cost you money. You have to also spend more money, or uh, perhaps you into monitoring their activities and so on. That's related to transaction costs. But by using this model, we assume there will be no transaction costs related to that. And also, we assume 
there's no tax as well in the real life but this is unrealistic in most of these countries and also we assume that the share pays no dividends of course you can argue that it's not relevant to this case for the investment appraisal but that's the general limitation of this model we assume that after we've got the money uh, I mean we are going to reinvest that into the company rather than paying out as a dividend to the shareholders and also we assume uh, that the short term interest rate is risk free and that's the reason why we use the risk free rate uh, to uh, be slots into a calculation but is that risk free in the real life well perhaps the answer for that is no okay when we're talking about when we are talk about the uh, interest rate the risk management in a second we'll see that there will be credit risk premium as well and when using a standard deviation is just to be an estimate first of all based upon the past information of your cash flows and also we're going to assume this to be constant throughout the project life But is the standard deviation constant throughout the life of a project? Perhaps the answer for that is no. Because cash flows will change uh, in each and every year, for example. But I mean, we assume that the standard deviation will be the same in each and every year of a project. But perhaps this would be not correct. OK, so that's the limitation of this model. But in particular, specifically for the investment appraisal, First of all, by incorporating the option value into the calculation, surely that would give us a true picture of the value of the project. Because we consider the project value as the MPV, but also at the same time, we consider the option value as well. Um, so that's the option value but we can also talk about well you say that we are going to delay the project perhaps what if there are other options as well such as to expand that would generate more revenue for the company or perhaps we're going to abandon the project perhaps that would generate more revenue so uh, perhaps there will be other options rather than just a single one. Okay, so uh, that's the investment appraisal. So that you can talk about. Uh, if you say that, okay, it's good because it gives the true picture of the uh, value of the project. But what if the other projects that is available, uh, other options that is available then for this project uh, besides the delaying option? So you can comment on that in the part B, only five marks for this, five points. Okay, I've written more than five here. And part C, if the above option is to abandon the project, what would be its value then? So, as I said, uh, I mean, if you go back to the variables here, especially for the time to ex exercise that option, you have to wait for two years before you do that. That's the European style. Option contract. That's different from the American style. It's the American style option contract, which means you don't have to wait for another two years, even though it's two years, but you can exercise that option before that two years at any point in time. But for the European style option contract, you need to wait for two years before you can exercise that. That will be a limitation that you can incorporate into the part boy. And also in the part C, we require to calculate the option 
where we're going to abandon the project, which is the put option value. So for the put option, if you go back to the formula, this will be given by your examiners as well. So the put option value will be equals to call option minus the price of the asset plus the PE times the E for the power of minus R and T. So we know that the call option value is to be 9.53 and PA is to be 38.75 million. PA is 35 million and times E for the power of minus 3.5% for the risk free rate times two years. And that will give us the put option value. So stop the tape now for one minute and calculate that on your own. So, I think you've done a great job. So that would give us 3.4 million for the put option value if you were to abandon it. Of course, comparing with the option to delay, the call option value is greater than the put option, and hence, of course, we're going to go ahead with the call option rather than abandon it. Because as you can see, the logic behind it is, for example, for the call option, the cost is to be 35, but you can get 38.75, and that's the reason why uh, you've only input 35, but you can get 3.75 more than your cost, and hence you're going to exercise that option. So that's the call option value would be great. But if you compare that with the put option, um, I mean, if you were to sell it, it's to be 35, but I mean, you can sell it at 38.75, but you lose that chance if you're going to sell it at 35. And hence, surely, the put option value in this case will be slightly lower than the call option value. I mean, why this still be a positive figure for a put option is simply because even though the intrinsic value for this is negative, but the time value for that option here in this case will be positive. So that's making the overall option value positive for a put option. Right, okay, so hope you're happy with these three requirements and please do that question and without looking at my answer, do that question and compare that with my answer. Uh, so that would be great because if you're happy with this question, you'll be happy with any other questions that the examiner may test you in the exam. So as you can say, there will be certain limitations that you can talk about here into your previous page of this question for the characteristics of this model. So uh, we finish off the section on the real options, uh, which is I said before, is from the option holder's perspective. Okay. So in the next section onwards, we'll be started to go through uh, the further aspect of the option pricing model. We're going to talk about the Greeks in a second. So see you in the next section. PC, accounting for your future.